I am Roy Fur, and today I'm going to share with you how to write more interesting marketing copy. This isn't how to write a better headline, how to make a bigger promise, how to write a better hook, how to write a better lead. It's not how to like back it all up with even more proof. It's not any of that. This is some. Um, uh, it's a, it, it's different copywriting advice than I think that you'll find in most books or programs or lessons or courses or anything like that. And yet the absolute best copywriters in the world, this is something that they focus on consistently. So that's what we will cover in today's episode. These are the proven direct response, marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Fur, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. So, how to write more interesting marketing copy. Okay, so this actually comes out of some advice that I, you know, I, I've heard this advice for writers. If you want to be an interesting writer, you have to live an interesting life life. Like if you want to write about interesting things, you have to go out and you have to do, you have to experience interesting things. And likewise, if you want to be a, a, an interesting marketing copywriter, you have to actually expose yourself to interesting ideas, to interesting experiences. You have to do things that are interesting and you cannot be caught up in this bubble that so many copywriters are caught up in, especially newer, more novice copywriters of like, okay, I have to write a headline that follows one of these headline formulas and my hook has to be this like powerful hook opening and it has to, like I have to follow all these rules of great copywriting. About 10 years ago, I actually had the opportunity to sit down with Bill Bonner and Bill Bonner um, is has long been known as one of the greatest copywriters alive. Most copywriters who are um, who who really study the craft and study the people who are great at it really admire Bill's writing. And uh, you know he actually so so Bill is actually the founder and the CEO. I don't know his official title, but he's the guy at the top of the Agora group of companies. And um, and he started that he started that company with a sales letter, and the sales letter sold his publication, International Living, and it was all about how to retire or live overseas as uh, as a U.S. citizen and live really well while doing that. And the funny thing about that letter is that when he wrote it, he just he just wrote from the heart. And he, he wrote about this experience of looking out over your garden at the sea, at the crashing waves of the sea, and all of these details of what it's like to live um, to live in this in a special place like like he was uh, imagining or talking about or um, had experienced, right? And he wrote that letter, and they mailed it, and it launched to International Living, and it worked really well for a while, and then. They, being a direct marketing company, they hired top copywriters to try and beat the control. Like that was the control letter, which means that it was what they knew worked best for selling that publication. And so they would hire these copywriters who would use all sorts of copywriting tricks and tactics and techniques and whatever to try to beat this, uh, to try to beat this control. And some of them, they would beat the control for a while. Like the, the, you know, the, They'd go head to head, but eventually, that older or, or the the newer one would would start to tire. It would start to fatigue. It would start to not get the same level of response. And they'd always keep Bill's letter in the rotation. Sometimes, you know, they'd update it a little bit and they'd test it against um, the one that had beat it. And then Bill's letter would come back. And then they'd hire some other copywriter to beat Bill's letter again. And maybe it would win for a while. Maybe it wouldn't. But the ones that won for a while, they they'd win for a while and they'd do pretty well. And then Bill's letter would come back, and then and then uh, you know they'd hire somebody else. And and I'm talking like twenty thousand dollar fees or more for the world's best copywriters to try and beat Bill's letter selling international living. And every time that another letter beat it, Bill's letter would come back and be the winner in the end. And for more than three decades, this letter continued to be the best sales message for international living. And it came out of this, like it, it came out of this 
experience of, of like Bill knowing from experience what it's like to to live the lifestyle that his prospects wanted to live. And uh, so, so about 10 years ago, I actually got to sit down with Bill and I asked him, you know, what makes him a great copywriter? And he said that, you know, he's learned thousands of copywriting and marketing rules. He's, he's learned how, like, you know, he's studied all the great copywriters. He's worked with and hired all the great copywriters. And he said he continuously comes back to like he, he, he learned all the rules. He learned to like internalize them in his writing. But what it keeps coming back to is that you find the story, like you get into your prospect's head and you find the story that feels compelling, that feels compelling, like from your heart while you are in the heart and head of your prospect. And you say, you know, does this, does this feel interesting to me? This story that I'm finding, does this feel interesting to me? And then you tell it in an even more compelling way than you found it. You tell it in the most compelling way possible and you find a way to tie it to your call to action, what, what action you want them to take. And so this all comes from or it's all fed by this this desire as a writer to uh, like have interesting experiences, to read interesting things, to not get caught up in this like in this bubble of let's say direct marketing, internet marketing, copywriting, whatever, where everybody is writing like everybody else. Everybody is trying to sound more like Eugene Schwartz than everybody else, more like. Uh, you know, more like Russell Brunson than everybody else, more like Dan Kennedy than everybody else. They're trying to sound more like whoever, right? Like they're 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 focused on okay, how can I how can I try to be this marketer? And so I'm going to study marketing on this like deep level versus how can I go out and like how can I number one get that foundation of like basic direct response copywriting marketing principles right how do I get that basic foundation but then how do I go out into the world and have experiences and consume media and learn things and like interact with human beings and how do I go out there and take in this entirety of my experience and then turn that around and use that as fodder for writing better copy. So, um, for example, like I read a few news stories and I start connecting dots and I'm like, oh, that news story about that is kind of tied to that news story about that. And what if we connected those two and made it tied to my offer? And suddenly I have this interesting news story to tell out of combining news stories and it, it makes for interesting reading and it makes for million dollar promos. Um, or I, I learned, I, I learned not just how to write, how to like study a product and write about the promises that that product fulfills, but instead study humans and like, what is the experience of having a problem that is, um, that's unsolved and having to go out and seek for search for a solution for that problem. And what does that process look like? And then how can I find the story that maps to that process with, with maybe the person who invented the product and, and ask them that story and get them to tell that story because it's almost always the same story with new details and get them to fill in all the details and tell that to me. And then I can retell that to the market, to the prospect. And it's going to be interesting because it matches the prospect's current experience of I have this problem, I have this challenge that I want to have solved, but I'm not having it solved. And so, you know, you want to write more interesting marketing copy. Well, go out and have interesting experiences, talk to interesting people, um, you know, consume interesting media, and don't let yourself get caught up in this world of studying marketing exclusively. Yes, I always study marketing. I'm consistently studying marketing. Even stuff that I already know, I go back through it just as, as motivation and continual reminders of 
uh, of like what works. And for me, it's like spring training for an athlete where they go back to the fundamentals. They go practice the basics. They, they practice the fundamental skills that are required. And I'm always going back to the basics. I'm always going back to the fundamentals. I'm always relearning things that I've, always, that I've, that I've already learned. But at the same time, I have this parallel path, this parallel track of all these other experiences in life that I'm trying to have, all these other subjects that I'm trying to study, all of these other inputs that I'm trying to open myself up to in order to constantly have like new, new stuff <laughs> that I can write about, like new, new fodder for writing about. And when you do that as a writer, as a copywriter, as a marketer, as someone who maybe maybe you don't write copy, but maybe it's something that you speak, you will find that the um, that what you put out stops sounding as much like marketing. And you know, I, re I recently heard uh, I, re I recently heard a conversation where uh, Stephen Pressfield was um, was talking to Tim Ferriss. And Stephen Pressfield put out great work. Tim Ferriss put out great work. And Stephen Pressfield actually has a background in advertising. And he said, nobody wants to read your advertising. Nobody wants to see or listen or watch. You know, no, nobody wants advertising. But they do want to have an interesting experience. And so if your advertising comes across like advertising, if your marketing comes across like marketing, if your copywriting comes across like copywriting, and it doesn't create an, an experience in your prospect's life that is more interesting than any other option available to them in that moment, then they're gonna tune it out. They're gonna click over to Netflix or Hulu or whatever other rabbit hole they could go down on the internet. But if you can give them something that feels like the most interesting possible thing to engage with in that moment, then and, and, and the way that you find that interesting thing is by going out there and being interested in lots of things yourself. If you can give them that interesting thing, then they're going to choose you over Netflix or Hulu or Facebook or whatever else. Um, and I will say that um, so often this does come back to stories. And so if I can... If I can give you any call to action in this, um, I, I do want to encourage you, if you haven't already uh, tried out my BTMS Insiders membership, it's like, um, it's like Netflix for marketing and copywriting training. And so you pay one low monthly fee, you get instant streaming access to my entire catalog of training. And, um, and I have a training in there called the Story Selling Masterclass. And it goes through all these different story templates, stories, that you can you use the template and it like turns on your radar to go out there into the world and say what are the interesting stories that map to this that i could actually then um th that i could then take that and use it in a selling message and when you get turned on to this, when you get tuned into this, you become a collector of stories. You go out there, you have interesting experiences, you pick up these stories and you say, oh, I can like, this is interesting to me. And I think that this will be interesting to my prospects. And so I can tell that story in a way where my prospects will be compelled to pay attention, to give me their attention over every other option available to them. And then to translate that attention into interest in my product, desire for my product, and action where they actually make the purchase. Um, and so check out the links in the description with this episode for uh, for more on the Story Selling Masterclass and BTMS Insiders. Again, my name is Roy Fur. This has been your daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Leave a comment with this or a review with this. Let me know on a one to 10 scale how valuable you're finding it and why. What are your action items? What are your takeaways? How is it changing what you are doing uh, in terms of your marketing, your copywriting, your business? Also, like it before you go. Tap that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you and so the magical algorithms of the internet know to share it with more people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly and subscribe before you go. You can subscribe here 
Also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com where you can sign up to get my daily emails, including these episode notifications and more exclusive content for email subscribers. All the links are in the description. Check those out. Uh, again, my name is Roy Fur for Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I always aim for a 10 out of 10 value. I hope that I've delivered it here and I look forward to seeing you again in your next episode. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.